Let's plot a graph that tells a story. The story we want to tell is the following. A car travels at a constant speed of 60 kilometers per hour for seven hours. And we want to plot a graph that shows the distance the car has traveled over time. Right, we need to remember a little bit about constant speed and distance and time and how that all works. So if, a car, if you're having a constant speed, your formula is given by speed is distance over time. Now what we want here is we want to relate the distance to the time. So let's make distance the subject of our formula. So to do this, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by time, and we're going to get that distance is equal to speed times time. And we've been told our speed is 60, so the formula here is going to be distance is 60 multiplied by time. Now we want to plot the graph. Before we plot the graph, we need to decide what goes on what axis. Now, the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, is where we typically put the independent variable. And the y-axis, or the vertical axis, is typically where we put the dependent variable. Now, independent, dependent variable, how does this work? What does that mean? Well, it really is one thing, the dependent variable, is the thing that depends on the independent variable. And if you think about it in this case, how far the car has traveled really depends on how much time it's had to be traveling, right? So how far it travels, the distance, is dependent on the time. So our dependent variable in this case is the distance. And our independent variable is the time. We then label our axes. So this time we don't want to call the axes x and y because we're telling a story. So we want to have the labels tell that story. So our independent variable is time. So we're going to label it with a t for time. And we're going to put in brackets that we're going to be measuring our time in hours. And our dependent variable is distance. And we're going to be having that in the in kilometers. Right, now that we've done that, we're going to just draw up a little table of values so we can start plotting. So I'm just going to look at, we've got to go um, up to 7. So I'm just going to look at a few values of time up to 7. So 1, 3, 5, 7. You could look at different values. You could look at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 if you wanted to. I'm going to just look at these few. It should give me enough of an idea of what's happening. My formula is distance is equal to 60 times time. So when time is 1, 60 times 1 is 60. So my point is 160. Um, and I'm not actually going to plot it yet because I haven't got any, um, you can see I've got no scale, no numbers on my um, axes yet. And that's really because I don't know how I need to do it until I've worked out the points. So let's go with um, time is 3. Then your distance will be 60 times 3, which is 180. So my point is 3, 180. For time is 5, uh, you're going to have 60 times 5, which is 300. And for 7, you're going to have 60 times 7, which is 420. And so you're going to get the point of 7, 420. So now I can see, look, I've got, I, I knew my um, horizontal, my time axis had to go from 0 through to 7. But now I can see that my distance axis, the y-axis, has to go all the way up to 420 at least. So then I'm going to have to work that out quite carefully so I can um, plot it nicely. Um, and this is how I've done it. So you can see there that I have gone all the way up to 440 in the distance. And I've kind of done it in, well, each little grey line represents a jump of 20. Uh, whereas for the hours, I've just had each grey line representing one hour. All right, now I can easily plot my points. 160 is over there. 3180 over there. 5300 is over there. And 7420 over there. And I see they're very nicely lying in a straight line. So I join them with a straight line. Um, that looks like that. So there's a nice picture of my journey 
or the car's journey actually, um, over time, how far, how far it's gone at each point in time. So we can read stuff off this graph too. So if we want to read off how far the car traveled in four hours, well, we've got to go and have a look where we are in the graph at four hours. And we're over there and we read off what the distance is there and we see that it is 240 kilometers. But as we've seen previously, we could have used the equation too, because every point on that graph must obey the occasion. equation. So we could go distance is 60 times time. And here we're talking about the time being 4. So we could calculate 60 times 4 and we'd get 240. So either way, read it from the graph or use the equation. Similarly, if we're going to ask something like this, how long did it take the car to travel 360 kilometers? Well, now we are being given the, the distance and we've got to get back to the time. So let's read it from the graph first. We go from 360 to the graph and we see we end up at that point there. And then we read down to see what time that, what time goes with that point. And we see that the time at that point is six hours. So reading from the graph gives us six hours. But of course, we could also have used our equation. We know that distance is equal to 60 times time. In this case, we've been given the distance and we want the time. So we put 360 in place of the distance and then we work out the time by solving that equation. So divide each side of the equation by 60 and we'll get the answer of 6 